A Love Letter In February of 2013, I received a love letter from 1944. I had been out in Los Angeles for a few weeks, compiling the writer's room for Broad City and gearing up to start season one. I sublet my apartment in Greenwich Village to a friend of a friend while I was away, a sweet guy who watered my plant, hard tea, and collected my mail. When I returned, I trudged up the stairs of my third-story walk-up with my luggage to find a large, neatly stacked pile on the kitchen counter. I'd never seen a few weeks' worth of mail at once and immediately got excited. I love mail. And with a stack like this, the chances of me getting something good were higher. I'm talking real mail. A handwritten note or postcard from a friend, a small care package from my mom or dad or grandparent. Real mail leaves an impression because it's an event, the surprise of receiving it, the examining of the envelope and the reveal when you open it. It's tactile and ritualistic. When I was about seven, my grandparents accidentally sent my brother and me a postcard from their trip to London with two punks in leather jackets holding up their middle fingers straight to camera. We teased them about it for years. My other grandfather was a sort of male connoisseur. He wrote me letters all throughout college. Sometimes the letter would be covered in stickers. Sometimes there'd be cash slipped inside. And other times there'd be a magnet his bank gave him for free. When I was away at overnight camp each summer, he'd send me care packages with fake cardboard bottoms he fashioned himself. He owned an army and navy store, so he was often fashioning things himself. There was always a letter included in the package, resting on top of the boring packs of sports socks or Hanes t-shirts to throw the counselors off, with instructions on how to pry open the perfectly fitted piece of cardboard he'd cut with an X-Acto knife. Underneath the fake bottom was neatly arranged candy and prank toys for my entire bunk. I loved finding that hidden loot. But it almost didn't matter what was inside the package. The act of receiving that loving gesture directly from him to me was enough. Now, sending or receiving real handwritten correspondence is like owning a classic car. It feels more thoughtful, curated, something you just want to run your hands along. But ultimately, it's no longer the most efficient way to drive. Even owning stamps seems bizarre these days. Imagine going to grab brunch with friends and someone says, Hold up a sec. I have to pop into the bodega and grab some stamps. Everyone would be like, for what? Bodegas have stamps? Also, what are stamps? I don't think you'd even make it to brunch if they stopped to drop the letter in the mailbox. You can use those blue things on the sidewalk? I thought those were Banksy's. We order more shit online than ever before and constantly get packages sent to us directly from the huge conglomerates taking over the world. But the thought of corresponding via snail mail with the people closest to us is absurd. What is happening to us? The efficiency and speed of email and texting is something I obviously take part in and use almost constantly. But the connection between us feels altered now. Like we never have to give more than part of ourselves when talking to anyone in any situation. We abbreviate, we rush delivery, we unsubscribe, we edit ourselves. When I was in college and communicating through social media was starting to really take off, for the first time you could connect immediately with everyone you've ever met and anyone you haven't yet with one drunken click. Yearning for something more substantial, I did a project where I sent handwritten letters to 20 strangers in 20 different cities all over the country to test what would happen. I found them randomly in the white pages and shared something personal with each of them, a story about myself that was in some way associated with where they lived. I included another envelope, stamped already, with my address and asked them to write back, sharing something of themselves with me. Would a connection be made? Would they, too, appreciate the long-lost art of letter writing? Would this be the beginning of lifelong friendships and paper cuts? from opening so many envelopes? No, it wouldn't. One person wrote back. A teacher and soap maker who had gone to art school and appreciated my curiosity. 